For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. This, my friends, is an LTD V250 from the year 2000. I remember when these things came out and I wanted one so bad, so to be able to work on one is truly a pleasure. This guitar belonged to Noah, and when he saw Trash to Thrash, he reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in taking on this project. It's a really sentimental guitar to Noah because it was purchased for him by his late father when Noah was playing in a band back around 2000. He loved the guitar, and as he says, it was road hard and put away wet. Noah told me it was pretty abused during his gigging days, and since then, it's been in the case for the better part of 15 years. Noah and I brainstormed and came up with a game plan for this guitar. It's going to get a new finish, new pickup rings, possibly some new wiring, and the replacement of some screws that are rusted out on the guitar. Our original plan with this guitar was to paint the back, the neck, and the sides matte black, then paint the front of it satin charcoal gray. But then Noah looked through some more of my work, and something caught his eye. Crackle. So the new plan with this guitar is still to paint the neck, the sides, and the back matte black, but the front of the headstock and body will now be painted white with black crackle. And after swapping out some of this hardware here, it's gonna look really awesome. I'm still working on the PV Rockmaster and the Jackson EX Dinky, but we'll get to those in just a few minutes. As with most of the guitars that I build, the first step is gonna be to hand it off to my shop assistant, Ryan, who's gonna disassemble the guitar, organize the parts for me, and sand it down. This guitar needed a little bit of body touch-up and sanding, and then it was ready for the paint booth. Before a guitar hits the paint booth, I always blow it off with air really good and then wipe it down with alcohol and water. The back and sides of this guitar are going to be painted flat black, so I started with that. Then I waited about a day and came back and sprayed on the matte clear. This will just give it a little bit of extra protection. Then I waited a few days before I put tape on it, and I taped off all the sides of the guitar and sprayed it white. And now the fun part, the crackle paint. It goes on black, and since we're only gonna be spraying one thick coat, the technique's a bit different than normally how I would paint a guitar. Normally I would have long, even strokes back and forth down the length of the guitar, but with crackle, you don't really wanna overlap the paint once it starts to dry, so you have to go real thick in one spot and then move on and not really come back to that same spot again. You can see I contemplated at the end going back and working on a little part, and I noticed it was starting to crackle, so I let it be. And now this is the fun part with Crackle, to watch the pattern that emerges. For this part, I'm leaving it in real time so you can kind of see how quickly the Crackle takes effect. The spots that aren't crackling yet are still drying. You can see they're pretty shiny. Once it dries, it starts to dull. Crackle paint jobs are kind of like splatter paint jobs in that every time you do it, it's an experiment. You never really know what you're going to get. But with both techniques, you need to learn them, and you'll find there are controllable variables. Here I'm going to speed it up to about 10 times. There's an old joke where you compare something boring to being as boring as watching paint dry, but I think with Crackle it's a different story. I could watch this stuff all day. Now it's been about 20 minutes and it seems like it's done crackling. I think this pattern looks great. There's spots where it's real fine, small crackles. Then there's spots where there's real bigger crackle. And I like the back and forth. I think it looks really cool, uneven, and ununiform very chaotic. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this crackle pattern. Do you like the black and white? I do. I think it looks awesome. It took a few weeks to get the crackle technique down, but I think it's starting to look really awesome. I recently bought some new crackle colors, so expect to see some crazy stuff in the future too. In the background of these builds, I'm still working on the four shop guitars that I never finished in the previous episodes. The Jackson Rhodes, the Roswell, the Crackle Kelly, and the Ibanez Proline V. Well, we're leading up to the season finale of Trash to Thrash, which is gonna be episode 20, and it's gonna be premiering May 13th. And I'm gonna reveal all four of these guitars to you. I'm gonna be building another few guitars in the meantime here on the show. So at the end of each episode, I'm gonna give you a preview of how these guitars are coming. 
And if you saw last week's episode, you already saw the Jackson Rhodes. This week, I'm going to be giving you guys a preview of the Ibanez Proline V. So be sure to stick around until the end. It is wild. I posted a brand new episode of Trash to Thrash 16 weeks in a row now. So we're going to go through to episode 20 and then I'm going to take a few weeks off. I'll still be working on a ton of guitars. Right now I have a huge backlog and I'm going to be recording every single one of them for season two. So I'll be back with even better production and more awesome custom paint jobs. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified every time I drop a new episode, hit the like button and leave your comments down below. I love hearing your guys' feedback about the guitars I'm working on. And if you guys have any questions about the guitars I'm working on or about your guitars, leave them down in the comments below and I take them and I answer them over on my other show, Sunday Morning Shred. Also, please continue to tell your friends about the show. The word of mouth has been great and it helps the show just grow. If you want me to rebuild your guitar and fix it up here on the show, email me, mark at guitarguts.com. My information is also down in the description below. Now let's get back to the PV Rockmaster and the Jackson Dinky EX. Here's what this PV Rockmaster looked like about three weeks ago when I started it. We stripped it down, sanded it, repainted it this really cool blue purple burst, threw some clear on it, made a custom clear pick guard for it, painted the headstock and replaced the logo with a silver one, and shot the clear on the headstock. So far this thing's coming out really awesome, and now let's get into what I've done in the last week. The frets on this guitar are really showing their age. They look really dull and kind of greenish, so I'm going to polish those up. They're not really in bad condition per se, just need some cleaning. I like to use steel wool to polish up my frets, so before I do that I'll tape off the fretboard so I don't scratch it up. I have a few different thickness tapes so I can find some spots where each one fits well, and then at the very end I'll probably have to cut up a couple pieces to make the right size. clean these frets, I'm just going to be using 4 aught steel wool. You just rub it back and forth across the fret, and you'll notice it starts to shine up right away. And the result? Clearly there's a huge difference here. It looks awesome after polishing it, and all it takes is a few minutes, really. Be careful using steel wool on completed guitars, though. Small metal fibers break off while you're working with it, and they get stuck to pickups sometimes, and they can completely ruin your pickups. Although the headstock looked pretty shiny and nice, it had some minor imperfections, a couple bumps, and a little bit of uneven texture to it, so I'm going to level sand it, starting with 800 grit sandpaper, move to 1000 grit sandpaper, then 1500, and then finally 2000 grit. For people who are brand new at painting, and they spray their first clear coat, it looks so good that they wouldn't want to sand it down like this, but the trick to getting it to look like a mirror finish is to sand it down, level it all out, and then polish it up from there. You can see I've sanded the majority of the headstock, but there's still a lot of low spots. So all those spots that are darker haven't been sanded yet, and that's what we need to do. Get it all level. So I'll continue to carefully sand it. You have to lay down a thick clear coat so you don't worry about sanding through your clear coat into your color. You want a lot of material to work with up top. And now after going through it with all kinds of sandpaper, it's actually looking pretty good. It looks really dull, but watch what happens. Using Meguiar's 105 Fine Cut Compound, I'm going to start the polishing process. I like to buff out the whole surface three to four times using this product and wiping it off in between each time. For a headstock, this really doesn't take too long to do. Then I'm going to wipe it all off and polish it out using Meguiar's 205 Finishing Polish. I'll repeat the same process with this. I'll do three to four coats buffing out the whole surface and in between each coat I wipe off all the polish so that I'm removing all the residue that's coming off with it. And this is the result, a glass-like finish. When it comes to sanding a guitar, it seems like that could be one of the most basic tasks of working on a guitar, and it really is, but there is a lot of subtle nuance that really makes it a little more complicated to newer builders. When you first start working on a guitar and you have the factory finish on it still, you don't need to remove the factory finish. You really just need to scuff it up with some sandpaper. I use 600 grit sandpaper because that's gonna be enough to scuff the guitar up for new paint to be able to bond to it with a mechanical adhesion. And also, it's not so deep that it's gonna leave deep scratches. When you use 320, 200 grit down there, you're gonna leave deep scratches in the guitar that the paint's not gonna wanna fill. How do you know when you use the piece of sandpaper too much? Well, I've seen some people use one sheet of sandpaper on a whole guitar, and that's not gonna work. When you start feeling the grit is not really there anymore on the sandpaper, like on this piece here, 
that's a dead giveaway that this piece isn't really doing anything anymore. It, it's really soft and smooth now, and it's not going to scratch up the guitar like you want it to. Sometimes chunks of the clear coat get stuck in here when you're sanding a factory finish off a guitar, and that's going to actually make the scratches worse in a guitar. So you want to make sure you clean off the sandpaper or get a new piece. You can only clean it so many times. Once you start to see these dots forming on the sandpaper that won't come off, you could try it with an air compressor, you could wipe it with a rag, they're stuck there, the sandpaper's toast. Don't be afraid to use a lot of sandpaper. There's a saying that they say that you should use sandpaper like someone else is paying for it. That being said, you also need to make sure that you've laid on enough clear coat or color that when you're sanding, you're not gonna burn through to the next layer down. I'm also building a custom case to go along with this guitar. I usually have a few different shells and different sizes for different guitars that are ready to paint, built by my shop assistant, Ryan. I like to color match them to match the guitars. I'll also be clear coating this one. So this one's not done yet, but after it gets its clear coat, it's gonna look crazy. And now it's time to level sand and polish up the body. I cut my sandpaper into little strips like this when I level sand. As you can see, this piece is done. And using that little piece, this is how far I got. It takes a long time to level sand a guitar, so you could tell I'm gonna be here for a while. But it's totally worth it because if you notice the texture of the guitar is very uneven where the reflection of the light is, and this is gonna take care of that. About 25 minutes later, I've gone over the whole guitar with 800 and it's looking pretty level. So I'm gonna switch over to 1000, do the same thing over the whole guitar again, and then 1500, and then 2000. Then it's onto the polishing just like I did with the headstock. This guitar is looking so good and it's gonna look even better when it has the hardware. We're going with a gold Goto Hardtail Bridge, made in Japan, one of my favorite hardware companies. A gold Q Parts knob with a blue inlay. That blue inlay is going to pop against this body. These are my favorite knobs for a guitar. And of course, gold Goto tuners. Goto makes my favorite tuners. We got brand new gold rolling string retainers for the headstock, and of course some gold ferrules for the back of the guitar. This thing's going to be super nice. Now I had started working on the pickguard, I got it cut out and a couple holes drilled, but it's time to make some mounting holes for it. That's going to be really easy since it's clear. I'm just going to lay it on the body where it's going to go and trace on where the holes are in the body. If this pickguard wasn't clear, I would just lay the old pickguard over it and trace through the mounting holes onto it. Now I'll go over to the trusty drill press and add the holes into the pickguard that we just marked. But no pickguard holes are complete without a beveled edge. We need to countersink it so that the screws are going to sit flush with the pickguard. Alright, this thing's looking killer. Let's see how these holes lined up. Perfect. This Jackson Dinky EX model has had a ton of work since it got here a couple weeks ago. It was in real poor shape. The Floyd Rose mounting studs needed to be completely routed out and filled back in with new wood. And there was a ton of body damage. But now it's got its new paint job and it's looking awesome. Check out last week's episode if you missed it and you want to know more about this guitar. It's looking real good so let me show you what I've done to it in the last week. After some prep on the headstock of the Jackson, it's ready for some green paint. And after three or four coats, it's looking real nice and slimy. I really dig this green. But to make it match the guitar, we need to stripe it up and throw some navy blue on it. And the reveal. Everyone loves a tape pole, right? It's trash to thrash Thursday, but it's also tape pole Thursday this week. After letting the paint dry for a few days, it's time to apply the headstock decal. I bought a vinyl cutter, and I made this one myself. That machine was a little bit of a game changer, because now I can make headstock decals on demand in any color I want. Gotta carefully pull off the top tape. Perfect. The white really cuts against those colors. Now we're replacing the pickguard on this guitar and we've already made some modification to it. But the holes don't line up because this pickguard was designed for American Fender Strat. So we're going to re-drill some and make it fit this guitar. 
I don't want to go too deep with these holes, so I'm using a piece of tape to kind of make a gauge on my drill bit. I used a set of calipers to measure the diameter of the screws also that I'm going to be using so that this is going to be a nice snug fit. And once again, it's time to level sand the guitar. Of course, the next step now is to polish this one up and reveal the gloss that's hiding underneath these scratches. I'll have a lot more for you guys on this one next week and the PV Rockmaster, so be sure to tune back in. All right, guys, like I promised before, I'm going to be giving you a preview of one of the shop guitars I've been working on in the background. On episode 20, I'm going to reveal the whole project of how this thing's been going. But for now, here's a little preview. The Ibanez Proline V is nearly unrecognizable from when you guys last saw it. So let me reveal to you the new and improved Ibanez Proline V. I went with the crackle paint job on this one, and I actually went with the exact opposite colors as this V250 I'm also working on right now. For the V250, I painted it white and sprayed black crackle over it. But for the Proline V, I sprayed it black and then threw white crackle over the black. So they're actually opposites of each other, both flying Vs, and it's kind of a coincidence that they're both here being worked on at the same time. I'm really happy with the way this one's coming out. It's already got the clear coat. I have the electronics picked out for it. So by episode 20, you're gonna see this thing completely finished up. By the way, if you guys are enjoying the music that's being played in the background on these episodes, then be sure to check out the link down in my description to my Spotify page, Mark Murray on Spotify. I do progressive metal, I've got acoustic albums, all kinds of really cool stuff, so go check it out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like I said, please tell your friends about the show, help it spread if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll answer them over on Sunday Morning Shred. I will see you guys very soon. Rock on, my friends.